Hello. As you probably already guessed from the title, we're doing something a little different today. We're trying something I like to call, Hey Look, Cookbook. Do comment below if this is going to work out for you. Because I do have a whole collection of cookbooks I can go through. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get started, shall we? Now, for our first episode here, we're going to try something a little simple here. We have the ever-fabled Betty Crocker here. And here we have cookbook for boys and girls. Something very simple. Something that I imagine several people watching this might have even had. I certainly had a copy of it. This one I had to get off of uh, Etsy because I can't remember where I put it, but I did have it at one time. Now, as you probably already can guess, there is uh, something that would make give people a little bit of an issue with this book. Can we tell what it is? If you guessed the very title of the book itself, you would be correct. Some people, if they saw that title of this day and age, would it be ha there would be having an aneurysm if they saw that. Now, from the years I've researched this, there was was originally known as Cookbook for Juniors, which was well, a while technically correct, a little bit weird, also perhaps a little male-centric, and there's also a cookbook for children in the early to late 90s. Still, this is the one I had, and this is the one with the most law-worthy law stuff in it. Let's have a look, shall we? Alrighty. Here we see the same children on the cover here. So at least they're consistent in that respect. Golden Press in Racine, Wisconsin. From the Western Publishing Company. So I'm going to get a close-up of that. So, yay. Okay. Now this is from the second printing of this particular edition from 1980. The copyright from this one is from 1975, which, well, yeah. <clears throat> And here we see a nice little table of contents here. Fairly simple and easy to read. If, in fact, you can read. And, interesting note, this is actually in the Library of Congress. If that information excites you. <clears throat> now, one of the things that tend to scream 80s, or rather, late 70s, early 90s, early 80s, was uh, this font right here. You don't see that anymore. Nor are you going to see a lot of these colors, for better or worse. Now here we have some basic quiz information. So now, yeah, that's, that's looking all right. Let you know, basic quiz you on how well you know your stuff. This is all some fairly basic things. You could probably, this is for elementary schoolers after all. If you, some which, some people, haven't learned even in their adulthood, but still. I'm not going to go too far into that. And in case you were stupefied, there is an answer key on the bottom there. Why you'd want that, to use that to cheat on a cookbook is anyone's guess. <clears throat> now, if any of you actually have all the utensils in your kitchen at this point at, at all, good for you. <clears throat> Otherwise, well, you probably make do with what you got. Especially a melon baller. Melon bars kind of went out of style a long time ago. I've only ever seen them at melon balls at buffets. Do comment below if you've actually seen melon bars used recently. Because I'm actually rather curious. So, you know. Otherwise, it's all fairly standard stuff. Though I imagine you probably have an electric timer, or a digital one at this point, rather than relying on the crank one. Custard cups, otherwise known as ramekins. Some people may have those, they just don't realize it. Anyway, and here we have, let's see, I'm gonna, let's look at that, ah, here we go. Imperial measurements, as opposed to metric. So, that's going to be a th thing for people 
who actually use metric for their cooking, that is something you're going to have to get used to. Again, this is from the 70s. Metric was the devil's work at that age. For some people, it still is. Anyway, we have some basics on how to measure your solid stuff, these, such as buttermilk, flour, sugar, both kind, granulated, powdered, and brown, along with baking powder. More items to you can figure out how to measure. Although with liquids, it's a lot easier since you actually have gradations on the cups themselves. Typically, so now we've got some safety tips. Some of which would actually be handy for adults I know. And a checklist for things that you probably that probably don't pertain to us too much. There's even a section on how to properly set a table. Oh boy. <clears throat> See now. Yeah, you can tell this is from just the TV. <laughs> anyway, we have they actually have the picture on uh, pages where you can actually get this stuff. Cheese apple snack. There's actually a recipe for sliced apples and cheese. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, again we see more of that funky, funky font. Along with certain step procedures for certain particular recipes. Sorry. I don't really, ha I just have a very small stand for this, so I have to make do with what I got here. Anyway, they do have the recipes as in simple enough directions as you can get. Basic snack stuff. If a little strange, they now these cooks corners are more or less nutritional information from a very old time. Is that right? Okay, yeah. You can I can read that through the screen here so you probably do that okay purple cow shakes using grape juice milk and vanilla ice cream I'm surprised they said that's gotta excite somebody Hawaiian pops using sliced peaches and red fruit punch drink ie Hawaiian punch that you just put in the freezer yippee skippy okay <clears throat> Now these are actually fairly competent recipes and the presentation is rather effective but according to this book these flour cookies are known as Mexican cookies not too sure what makes them Mexican but there we go more stuff about using oh, fairly interesting stuff Stuff or fairly useful stuff anyway. Then big fat cookies. Page on this page. It does mention how many you're. <clears throat> does mention how many you're supposed to make or relatively, but whether or not it actually does that is well depending on the person that making them, I guess. <clears throat> yada yada yada. Okay, more Cook's Corner stuff. Get a little bit. Pause that if you care to read that. Now about that tomato soup you saw, that was actually called tomato mush. Although it's basically just blended up tomato juice with celery and carrot. And a touch of seasoning. It's so basically a bloody Mary without this without the alcohol. Oh boy. Okay. Now we're getting into some more peculiar imagery and but helpful items. Okay. From main dishes. Again, the recipe there is, or something resembling it, it shows you which page it's on. Now, here's something I don't think I've ever seen eggs in the bologna cups. If I can get that, really show you 
what I'm seeing here. Yeah, that's just a little weird. Okay, get to ah, see here. <clears throat> Sorry if the light here is kind of shining on the recipes. If you're actually were planning on doing any of it, you could probably find them just about anywhere. But I can at least show you more of that funky font with the, with the recipes themselves. Now, one thing I wanted to show you. <clears throat> there we go. Is this particular cook's corner? This shows you just how old this truly is, because this at one point was nutritional information. Obviously, we don't have a problem with <laughs> with having meat these days. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. Much to the misfortune of many. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Okay, there we go. We can get this there. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Anyway, moving on. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. This picture right here, this isn't actually hamburgers. This is essentially no crust pizza. But it uses ground beef as the crust. Not vegetables, not nothing like that. Not tortillas, brown beef. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's a little bit better. And the now following page, of course, hamburgers and sloppy joes, everything. Well, other things involving meat. The taco sealed with refried beans recipe right here. A uh, meatloaf with several different variations, including football meatloaf. Yay. And meatloaf rings. Now, a note about this picture. This right here, this is not cheese. These are canned potatoes with ketchup. Yeah! And they even have cheesy potatoes over here in this one. And they have just carrots. Frozen carrots on that one. Yippee skippy. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Sorry if I'm just skipping through a lot of the stuff that doesn't have pictures in it, but like I said, you can probably find this anywhere, or you might even be able to find a copy of this book somewhere in your house or online. Anyway, here we have lovely Crater Ham Loaf. Mmm. Hmm. <clears throat> there are no words. So we'll move on. Now, it says fondue for this recipe right here. But really, it's tartar sauce. Fish sticks and tartar sauce. That's all it is. And we even have the much maligned on this page. Tuna casserole. Something that nobody is, glad, is ha sad that it went out of style. Anyway, moving on to salads and vegetables. Got the patriotic image right here now, isn't it? Okay. Now we get on to one of the problems with trying to serve salads to children. Disguising it as animals. Now, in theory, this idea works. You get a cute animal there on the plate, you figure your children's gonna eat it. What do children have to do in order to eat it? Tear it apart. So it's really a bit counterproductive now, isn't it? <clears throat> now, 
as for some of the more bizarre recipes, you have yellow haired girl salad that involves one canned peach half, a celery stock, one maraschino cherry, a large marshmallow, raisins, and shredded yellow cheese. Uh huh. Nutrition. <clears throat> yeah, more. Recipes with no pictures on them, although we do have the watermelon salad right here. Although you can probably already guess how that goes. More salads in the shape of animals. Going on. And now we have what's supposed to be Italian salad with something called Bambinos. Bambinos in this book are basically Ritz crackers with tomato sauce and cheese on them. Uh huh. <clears throat> I mean, at least they're trying with the salad. I mean, you do have rad tomatoes, radishes, and mozzarella cheese. I guess that is. Yeah. <clears throat> but then you also have fanned out pickles on bologna. If I could figure that out, I would tell you what that's all about. But I can't. Ah, uh, here we go. A section on starting your own box garden. Take one of your mom's old kitchen towels, spread seeds on it, and... Well, you gotta borrow both the towel, a loaf pan, and the seeds. And then just... After watering it, let it sit in the sun for almost two weeks. And you'll have your own sprouts. Again, this is the 70s, so people are broke as a joke. Nowadays, you can probably just either buy them or get a whole herb garden full of sprouts. So, yeah. Okay. Let's see here now. Da, 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 da. Now here. Okay, now. Corn on the cob. How many recipes for corn on the cob you know that involve sugar and lemon juice? Not many, I'd imagine. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Then you have... Well, something that's going to be a lot more interesting than it actually is. This is just frozen dough that you make into shapes. These are mostly just peculiar sandwiches such as egg salad and peanut sandwiches yes you I am a little surprised as you are and the cook's corner here regarding hard-boiled eggs now, pizza with shrimp well and something called Vienna bread Whatever that is. <clears throat> Open face pineapple and ham sandwiches with shoestring potatoes on top. Polka dot pizza with frankfurters as the polka dots. Not sausage. Frankfurters. I mean, up until that point, you were they were doing fine. Biscuit mix, okay, I can kind of see how that would work. But yeah, <clears throat> polka dot pizza, unless you're going to use something a touch more pizza-like. Well, I imagine people are still kind of treating pizza as a novelty, so. I'm not going to give it an automatic pass, but it is at least slightly understandable. And then you have the breakfast breads, French toast, waffles... Sausage that you wrap up in pancakes. Pancakes you can make into shapes, which is pretty much any pancake mix. Corn pancakes and homemade pancake syrup. Okay. <clears throat> so now even more of this loveliness and 
Now they call these pretzels. Obviously, without something to make it a lot more brown, that's the best they're going to get. I know for a fact that if you dunk them in baking soda for a few minutes, for a few seconds, like 30 or so, you can get a much more brown effect than what these are. Otherwise, these are just twisty bread. <clears throat> and here it is, the frozen dough fun. And peach double deckers, basically just short version of cookies with whipped cream and peaches on it. Now, for this is raspberry ice cream. You've probably seen your parents or your grandparents have an ice cream maker set up similar to this. But instead of actually making the ice cream itself, it basically just has you use ready-made light ice cream and add raspberries to it. That's kind of half-assing it now, isn't it? Now, some of these things are actually a little bit helpful, but marshmallow custards, basically it's just what's supposed to be a custard or something similar to it, using marshmallows as the base. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I hear those big fat cookies. You cannot get away with that name today. Peanut a peanut chocolate pie, which would probably kill people that, in this day and age. And angel food cake with uh, frosting and a with well using whipped cream or at least frozen whipped cream and a hell of a lot of coconut. And rabbit cookies. I'm guessing that the standards for the, any of these prices are very low. <clears throat> okay. Now, pink meringue pie. Basically just a can of cherry pie filling, a frozen pie crust, and... They say it's meringue. Well, it is kind of because it has cream of tartar in it, but you don't cook it. Okay. Moving on, moving on. <clears throat> okay. Here we have something to play in the meals for, such as breakfast, the picnic, and stuff like that. Cute little picture, but. Imagine a lot of people go to this effort. Now this gives you timetables for what you're supposed to do for these, as well as the menu itself. If you're actually able to do any of this, <clears throat> that stick on schedule, well, good for you. <clears throat> okay, then we have a Mother's Day dinner. Again, timetable that may not may not be accurate. So you know, this, now the little brown hints do involve a uh, Cornish game hens. If you're already a little squeamish about chicken, that may using very small ones is not going to be that much better. <clears throat> then you have the barbecue. Now the sizzling hamburgers just uses a. Uh, Hamburger and soy sauce for the seasoning. I mean, sure. That'll certainly work. And you also have something called everything bars, which, which uh, seems to involve tang and creamy peanut butter. Yeah. <clears throat> moving on, moving on. Here we have cheesy skillet drop biscuits over a scenario that would not exist in real life. Now, walking salads. 
Here we go. That's uh, no, there we go. Yeah. So here we have a hollowed out tomato filled with cottage cheese. That's well, that's at least resembling something healthy. Then you have cheese wrapped around bologna with a piece of cabbage. You have ants on a log, and then you have something resembling toothpick kebabs. Yeah, okay. Then you almost condescending recipe, quick soup with rice, which is a can of tomato soup or beef bouillon with uncooked rice that you just leave in there. Well, they're not lying. It certainly is quick. Okay, yeah. Mm. Now, just more weirdness, including how to grill bacon. I know how to bake bacon, but grilled bacon kind of defeats the purpose if you're trying to save the bacon fat. Yeah. Frank kebabs. Yes, basically you cut up hot dogs and put them on the kebab steaks and then grill them that way. Now, and the recipe mentioned here it uses pineapple chunks. This again uses canned potatoes. There's also a, a substitution with pickle chunks. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. Well, then I'm going to turn the page. <clears throat> now, here we go. Another quick on of his recipe, the orange sip. There are... Now, when it says peppermint candies, it means more it means of a very soft peppermint stick. I've actually tried this once. It kind of worked. You're, the, the peppermint stick kind of disintegrates rather quickly due to its nature. And you're kind of left with a rather mushed up orange. Regardless of what happens. So, it's a thing you can do, whether or not you want to. But it's there. Uh, in case you were completely baffled by the concept of how a s'more works, get that. There we go. Now you know. If that's exciting to you. And then we have the holiday section. Something like it. With a nice gingerbread house. Well, cookie chalet. With gumdrop trees made out of Cheerios. Yay. Okay. Now we have ice cream cake. Something resembling ice cream cake anyway. I mean, you take a half gallon bucket of ice cream and just kind of <clears throat> run frozen whipped topping around it and you just cover it in cho chocolate caramel sauce. Not that hard. Uh, uh, see now. Bouncing ball red punch, it's, you know, melon ballers, fruit punch drink, and lemonade. 105, what the hell? Oh. That. Okay, okay, moving on, moving on. I'm not. I do have some good ideas here, like no cook divinity. Good for people who aren't all that familiar with it, but it does involve basically using frosting that you leave out for a while. So, for some people that's a thing. If that's good for you, then you're good. Then everything's fine there. Noodle nests, basically again just using frosting and chow mein noodles and some jelly beans. So, you know, then you actually have a couple recipes. For Halloween you have Pumpkin cupcakes and pumpkin loaf. And you have perhaps the most striking picture in this book. Ghost cake with flaming eyes. I have never seen anyone actually try this. Now to get this effect, basically you save two eggshells and 
get two sugar cubes and cover them in lemon juice and set them on fire. No one, I, the entire time I was a kid, had ever tried anything like this. Because the candles on a cake were dangerous enough for them. But still, makes for a cool image. Okay, how to make and bake that ski chalet. So now, and you have some basic stuff like how to make your own peanut butter. You know, caramel apples. That's actually somewhat useful there. And gumdrop squares right there. So that's something. It's kind of a lost art, so that might actually be helpful. The peppermint taffy. Not, that can't be used for the orange drink. Grape jelly. Rocky Road fudge using... Well, yeah. You probably already know how that goes. And you have the table of contents. And there we go. And obviously, this has been a little... This is still a bit of a prototype phase for this type of thing, but if you enjoyed what you've seen so far, or if you can think of any ways to improve, do put it down in the comments below. Like I said, I have a lot of books I could cover with this, and perhaps not just do this whole thing in one take. That might help. Possibly. Anyway, this has been Hey Look Cookbook, and I hope to see you next time.